All right, this video is a deep dive into the newly added feature in Rekordbox DJ. This gives you the ability to play and stream Apple Music files in Rekordbox DJ performance mode. So in this video, we'll take a look at how to configure it, how to use it, the things that I like about it, and some things I would hope to see in the future. At the time of this recording, we're using Rekordbox version 7.1.0.0023, which is the latest version as of the time of this recording. First thing we need to do is to enable Apple Music. And so to do that, we click on Settings, and we go to View, and we go to the Layout tab in View. And in here, you can see all of the different media that are available, and we are going to choose Apple Music. You can see that there are both iTunes and Apple Music items available. You can have either of them selected, including both of them at the same time. You could also have these different streaming services selected at the same time. For this demonstration, we're just gonna keep Apple Music selected and close it out. Once Apple Music is enabled, you can see the Apple Music symbol on the left-hand side here. It's very small. Thank you, Rekordbox 7. But it is over here on the left-hand side. Once you click on the Apple Music symbol, you'll see that you can now either sign in or start your free trial. I'm already an Apple Music subscriber. I'm gonna go ahead and click the button that says sign in now or start free trial. It's gonna launch my web browser and bring me to a point where I need to sign in to my Apple Music account. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into my Apple Music account and I'll see you guys on the other side. All right, now that I've signed in to my Apple Music account, it's taken me back to Rekordbox DJ, and you can see that it has taken me to my home screen, and it's showing me my recently played albums or playlists in giant cover art form. If we slide over to Apple Music itself, the actual Apple Music program, you can see that if I go to the home screen, that it actually shows the same recently played ones right there as well. Additionally, while in the home screen, if I go into any one of these playlists, you can see that when I mouse over any of these individual artists, that it actually looks like a hyperlink as if I was on a web page or on Apple Music itself. And when I mouse over it, you can see that it says, go to artist page. And if I click on that artist's name, it actually goes to a page that showcases all of the songs by that artist. Pretty cool. This is something that is very Apple Music or Spotify or Beatport when it comes to discoverability tools. You can also see that when I click on any of these playlists that it gives me a button at the top to save as a playlist. And if I click on that button, it says import a playlist, imports a playlist, the playlist is imported to both collection and playlists. So if I click that and it begins importing, now if I go to my playlists, you can see that that playlist has already been imported and is starting to analyze the tracks. Now, while in Apple Music, if I wanted to say, go to this New Jack Swing playlist and add it to my library by clicking this add button on the right-hand side, you see the add button changes to a check mark. And now if I go back into record box and refresh the library with the handy refresh button. Apple Music is gonna refresh. And then from there under Apple Music, you go into library, go to recently added, and you will see that playlist that you just added shows right up. Continuing on under the Apple Music options, there's the top picks for you, then the different ones that are done by your curation. It has your replay playlist. These are all things that are feeding to you from Apple Music's discoverability. It also has the library, so it has a playlist, artists, albums, songs, recently added, we talked about that a second ago, um, and recently played, these are all here. And then if you go into the charts section, this is pretty handy. You can see that there are top tracks from Apple Music's charts. There's the top albums in Apple Music, the top playlists in Apple Music. Like in this case, this is a 90s hip hop essentials playlist, already curated, definitely would be fun to dig through stuff like that. So make sure you take time to go through the top playlists. The daily top 100 is really fun because there's different charts for different areas. So you can do like a top 100 global chart and it does have them ranking from one to 100, or you can do like a top 100 USA and see the differences between the USA charts and the global charts. It looks like that under the charts section, you can also click 
on these artists and go to their artist page for them as well. Top 25 in different cities. That's pretty cool. Pretty fun for digging if you're looking for popular music in different regions or just looking for ways to browse different music, different genres. Lots of fun for digging. And I think the most common feature that we'll be using is searching directly in Apple Music for certain things. That seems to be pretty snappy. I was concerned that it was going to be really slow but it actually does a pretty good job of discovering songs. It even found songs uh, that I wouldn't have known about otherwise just by searching different names. And so, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the ability to search. I'm kind of bummed that the search results don't give you those handy little links for the artist. So if you're looking for a specific artist and you wanted to find the artist's page, it'd be nice if those links were there. But otherwise, searching for a song in Apple Music seems pretty snappy as long as your connection is decent. Also for the mobile cats out there, if you look at the attributes column on the very left hand side, you can see that the ones that have explicit content, they have a capital letter E next to the Apple Music logo. So if you mouse over it, you can see, first of all, there's the capital E and the Apple Music, and you can see that it says, Apple Music track explicit, this track might be inappropriate for children. Pretty handy for mobile DJs to make sure that you don't accidentally play an explicit version of a song. It'll tell you in this attributes field if it's a clean or dirty version, which is pretty nice. Give me all the dirty versions. Okay, so we're back in our normal collection. We are out of the Apple Music integration, and this New Jack Swing Essentials playlist has been added as a playlist in my normal tree view here. And you can see all of these attributes show that they are in fact coming from Apple Music. I want to add something from my own collection into this playlist. So I will search for Rob Bass, Joy and Pain, and I'm going to add it to this playlist. Not the Frankie Beverly. That's a whole other playlist. This is so weird about Rickerbox 7. So I've found Joy and Pain. I need to add it to this playlist. So I bring up this secondary window at the bottom and drag Joy and Pain into the New Jack Swing playlist. You see that it lets me add it, no problem at all. And if I scroll down and you'll, you'll see that Joy and Pain has been added to the playlist and it has its own different attribute. It's a Dropbox track because this track is a track that is synced to my Cloud Sync service from Rickerbox. I can also see that there is a beat source version of Joy and Pain in my library. And just to show that you can do multiple streaming services as well, I'm going to add that one so you can see Joy and Pain from Beat Source and Joy and Pain from my local library are all intertwined in the same playlist as songs from Apple Music. Love that. And just for good measure, I went ahead and went, I'm going to Apple Music right now and I'm grabbing Joy and Pain from Apple Music and I'm going to add it to this playlist as well. So now I have a local copy, one from Beat Source and one from Apple Music. All right, so we have all three versions of Joy and Pain by Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock in the same playlist. One of them is from Apple Music, one of them is from Beat Source, and the other one is a Jason B edit that I've had for years. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is bring up the new guy, Joy and Pain. We're gonna load this one up, and you can see it loads right up. There is no stem support, so you don't see any stems trying to load at all. And looks like the beat grid is nice. Looks like it did a good job of finding the beat grid. I, I gotta give it up. Rekordbox's beat grid analysis has come up recently. Big up to Rekordbox for doing that. So I'm gonna fire it off. Right away, you'll notice there's no audio coming from this. That that's on purpose to, for me to avoid copyright, but it definitely is playing and it's playing smoothly. I can add cue points. We can scrub it back and forth. You can instant double it. This is awesome. I'm so happy that we're finally able to do this inside Apple Music. Absolutely stoked. So spoiler, because we're not gonna be playing any audio, there won't be any audio quality shootout. And if you want me to give you my honest opinion right now between the two Beat Source and Apple Music, it sounds identical because it's probably coming from the same master. But the main difference is, is on Beat Source, I have the ability to do the stems and the stems are working great. So for me, if I was to do a comparison between the three of them, I'd say my local file, I obviously prefer the most. Second, I would say Beat Source comes in because of the ability to have an offline locker and the stem capability. And then third would be Apple Music. 
So for me, application of Apple Music would be strictly for songs that I don't play on a regular basis. Either they're specific to an event, in which case internet connectivity is essential, or it's a song that I wouldn't miss if for some reason I didn't have the ability to connect to the Apple Music servers. As far as functionality goes, it works. One feature in the Apple Music section that I don't see, which is kind of a bummer, is the discoverability tools from the actual search bar. I hope they integrate this because this is actually something that I use a lot on my phone and when I'm just digging through Apple Music on my laptop. I'm gonna shoot over to Apple Music, the actual app, and show you what I'm talking about. See right here in Apple Music, if I go to, you can see there's the home and everything else that recently added, these are all showing up in your record box. But if you click on search, in Rekordbox, it gives you that blank screen. Whereas if you're in Apple Music and you click search, before you search anything, it gives you all of these discoverability options. And these are all really good for helping you find certain things if you're looking for different styles of music and you wanna just browse different styles of music, including giving you different playlists to pick from, which you can then obviously add these into Rekordbox using the add tool, but having these types of features from the search bar would be super handy. One of my favorite browsing features from these categories is the essentials section. If I go to the essentials section, you can see that there's all these really, really cool playlists that would be amazing if DJs could have all of these added as a browsable feature inside of Rekordbox. I feel like we're scratching the surface with the ability to start doing this with Apple Music, but I don't feel like we've reached our full potential yet. And this is one of the things I would really like to see is just going to the normal search field here and having this fill the page. Another little area of improvement, some inconsistencies in the browser. Here's an example. I'm in home and I go to recently played and I go to this new Jack swing playlist. And it has this handy feature of the save to playlist like I was showing before. And if I go into library and go into the recently added section, and I go to that same playlist, that button is not there. And I don't have the ability to like easily add this to a playlist. I would have to do the weird record box seven thing of creating this second little browser thing down here, making a playlist and then dragging all of these into that playlist, right? That would be the only way of doing it. You can't just you know, easily add it, which is interesting. Even on some of these Apple Music playlists, don't judge me by my playlist names, but if I right click or control click on one of the playlists, you can see it has this import playlist contextual menu as well. So in here you have two different ways of adding up or three different ways of adding songs from Apple Music into your collection as a playlist. And none of them are consistent across the board. You do it this way in this area, this way in a different area. That workflow could be refined a little bit. Have it be the same process. Just make this big old button at the top the way to go for all of them. That's the way to go. And while we're at it, the other thing that is obvious to DJs, and this has been said across the platforms around the world. No offline locker and no stems ability is obviously a deal breaker for a lot of folks, especially cats in the mobile areas where internet connection is not guaranteed or those who have started relying heavily on stems as part of their mixing workflow. For those out there who need those features, I understand and right now Beatport and BeatSource are the way to go for that and they are awesome. Some of you are using Tidal as well. Tidal has a tiered up version of their normal subscription service that allows you to do an offline locker and stems. I'm not a big Tidal user. I'm not really in the Tidal ecosystem, so I couldn't give hands-on experience from that. But if you'd like to see a Tidal deep dive similar to this one, leave a comment below and I'll probably still never make one. My overall thoughts on this, I think this is amazing. Apple Music has one of the largest market shares when it comes to music streaming services. And so this makes DJing a lot more accessible to a large audience who otherwise would see the ability of incorporating their music library, specifically their Apple Music library, a giant barrier for being able to DJ. I also see this as a handy tool for the mobile DJ industry. Yes, I'm aware that not every location has the ability to connect to the internet and utilize this service. I'd say the majority of the locations for a lot of mobile DJs has plenty of bandwidth to mobile hotspot from your phone. 
and take advantage of this service. A lot of us are already using Apple products and are already in the Apple ecosystem with iPhones and DJing on MacBook Pros. And so for many of us, this is a subscription that we're already paying. So the idea of integrating this into your workflow is a low risk opportunity making this probably one of the most viable features that has been added to DJ software since the ability to use streaming services in general. I will absolutely be using the Apple Music integration in Rekordbox DJ. I really like that as somebody in the Apple ecosystem, anytime I'm on my phone or in my car or tuned in on my television with the Apple TV, the CarPlay, the iPhone, the iPad, the MacBook Pro, it's not a flex. A lot of us are living that lifestyle. Anytime there's an ability to add a song or playlist to my Apple Music library and knowing that that's going to translate right into my DJ software without any sort of extra workaround is going to add so much to my productivity. And I'm really excited to start implementing this.